So our guest today is the Shavy Harrison. Mr. Harrison, I was just giving some hints to my community about who was joining us, and I said it's the most hope-inspiring man in America at the moment. Oh, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, we're having a little trouble hearing you, but while we're figuring that out, if you don't mind, I'd like to give my community a perfect formal introduction of you because I just feel like you are very, very important yeah. to being in this moment in history. So um, all of you, Jamie Harrison was raised by his grandmother, Jimmy Lou, and his grandfather, Willie, in South Carolina. And after graduating from Yale, he came back to his community to take care of his grandparents and to teach in his community. He then served in South Carolina as an advisor for a congressman and then became the first African-American director of the House Democratic Caucus. He is running to unseat Lindsey Graham in order to protect <laughs> health care the state's economy, public school funding, and goodness and decency in general. Mr. Harrison has a brilliant wife who I'm obsessed with, who is a law professor and just a powerhouse named Marie Boyd, and they have two precious sons. And as you all know, anyone who's been paying attention, Jamie Harrison has just activated this bipartisan grassroots enthusiasm, and we are here to do everything that we can do to support him in unseating Lindsey Graham and instilling decency into leadership in South Carolina. So, Mr. Harrison. Yes. South Carolinians have cast more than one million ballots already. One million ballots. That is a record. That's awesome. Talk to us about this enthusiasm you're seeing in South Carolina. Well, uh, you know, I've never seen anything like it. Probably the closest thing that I've seen is in 2008 when Barack Obama actually won the nomination here in South Carolina in the primary. Uh, folks are really energized uh, on the ground. And, and you see it and you feel it all over the state. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's just, it's fantastic. It really is fantastic because it's a campaign built on hope. It's a mm -hmm. campaign, you know, when you think back, to this, you know, the past few years have been so hard for so many Americans. Uh, you know, and you add on top of it the impact of the coronavirus, and people are just looking for a little, uh, a little beam of light, of hope, something that they can hang their hats on and say, you know what, that's what I'm gonna, that's the light in the darkness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go towards that light, mm -hmm. and that's what we've tried to bring in this campaign. It's visible. The light is visible. We can feel it all the way in Florida, thank God. Um, so, you know, even before COVID, just two years ago, just talking about South Carolina specifically, there were so many counties in South Carolina that didn't even have an OBGYN, right? Yeah, 14. 14 out of our 46 counties, no OBGYN. Think about that. You are a young mom in one of these counties, and you have to travel outside of your county in order to find an OBGYN. Uh, we got 30% of our rural communities that don't have access to broadband. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on and on on all of the issues that are plaguing this great state. I mean, this is a wonderful state with amazing people. We just happen to have feckless leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lindsey Graham uh, uh, is the perfect example of that fecklessness. Mm -hmm. And so we can do better and we will do better. We just got to change the leadership we have here. We will also all integrate the word feckless into our vocabulary. Stat. <laughs> Loving it. Fecklessness everywhere. Okay. Um, Mr. Harrison, 100 million eligible voters did not vote last election. Can you talk to us a little bit about the importance of voting? You know, it's so important to vote. And, and I've, I've had this conversation a lot recently with a number of folks, uh, particularly some of our younger uh folks out there who are thinking, why is it important? You know, I often tell the story, uh, uh, it's, I call it my dirt road story. Um, and we, we made an ad out of it. In, in essence, when I was the chair of the South Carolina Democratic Party, 
I went canvassing in a rural area and I uh, went down this dirt road and uh, there are a number of little shotgun houses. These are you know, mm-hmm. style of houses in the South. Uh, and, uh, and I knocked on the door and this elderly African-American man came to the door. And he said, well, who are you? And I said, sir, I'm the chair of the Democratic Party, and I'm here to ask you to go vote. And he said, huh. he said, son, you see that road you came up on? And I looked back. I said, yes, sir. He said, what kind of road is that? I said, it's a dirt road. He said, son, that was a dirt road when Ronald Reagan was president. It was a dirt road when the Bushes were president. Son, that was a dirt road under Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Son, that's still a goddamn dirt road. So until either you Democrats or Republicans pay my road, I don't want to have to deal with any of you. And he shut his door and went back in his house. Now, I was in my feelings a little bit. I was a little hurt. But I started thinking about what he really meant. For him, for, for decades, you had politicians coming in, Democrats and Republicans, promising to invest in infrastructure, promising to pave his road. Well, that, but nobody ever did it. And that dirt road is symbolic of the broken promises you see all across our state, where folks will, you know, in part Allendale County, that dirt road is probably their public schools. In Bamberg County, it's their uh, hospital that has closed down. People are just tired of broken promises that they've heard from both parties, and they really just want somebody right now. They want somebody who's going to keep their word, going to keep their promise, but roll up their sleeves and fight and work for them now. And it's not good enough to say, you wait until I get elected in office. They want to see what you're going to do right now. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I have a program called Harrison Helps. Uh, It's like having a nonprofit built inside of our campaign. We have been not only campaigning, but we've been on the ground helping people. I mean, we've had school supplies drives. We've worked at battered women's shelter. We, we've made dinners at uh, uh, Ronald McDonald House. We, we've helped with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we gave out over almost 10,000 supplies, personal hygiene kits uh, to families dealing with the, the hardships of COVID. And that's what we need to do, that we can't just be about politics. We have to about, be about improving the lives of the people in this country. And uh, I want folks to to know who I am and what my values are now and what I'm going to fight for. And I'm only going to do more once I get to the U.S. Senate. Mm. It reminds me of the Dr. Maya Angelou quote that people show you who they are during the campaign. Believe them the first time. Believe them. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, South Carolina was the first state to secede from the Union. Yes. Right. And the Senate seat that you will be taking... Um, next week was the one held for 48 years by the notorious racial segregationist Strom Thurmond. Can you please tell us about the history that will be made in South Carolina on November 3rd? This is a history-making race, and the folks in South Carolina have the opportunity uh, to close the book on the Old South and write a brand new book called The New South one that is bold, that is inclusive, that is diverse, where all of our voices are heard and valued. And so you're right. This was the seat of Strom Thurmond. It was the seat of John C. Calhoun. This was the seat. This actual seat that I'm vying for was the seat of a man called Pitchfork Ben Tillman. Ben Tillman was governor of South Carolina, and he was also a United States senator. And when he was in the Senate, he would go to the floor of the U.S. Senate and talk uh, with joy about the lynching of black folks about keeping black folks voters from the polls. Uh, And so this is a seat that I'm vying for. And so in the state that was the first to secede from the union because of the issue of slavery, uh, we're on the verge of being the very first state to have two black senators serving at the very same time, one Democrat, one Republican. And I think there is no greater uh, example of what I would call the new South. Okay, what can this community do Mr. Harrison, those of us who, this is an incredibly engaged community. They've been doing an action um, to flip the Senate or to put Biden in in the White House every single day for the last 40 days. Our campaign is called We Can Do Hard Things. Our day today is all geared towards you and this race in South Carolina. What can we do, whether we're in South Carolina or whether we're not in South Carolina, to support you in these most crucial last few days in this race? Well, the, the important portal is go to jamieharrison.com. 
sign up if you want to volunteer. If you still want to make a donation, we're still funding grassroots campaigns to, to get the vote out. Um, uh, but we could definitely use more volunteers. So if you want to do phone banking or text banking, uh, if you are a voter in South Carolina, go vote. Don't wait until November 3rd. Go vote now. Uh, vote early. Uh, if you know folks in South Carolina, encourage them to vote as well. It's so important to get as many voters to the polls now that we possibly can. And so uh, those are the ways that you could be helpful. You can volunteer, you can contribute, or you can just go and vote. <laughs> uh, and I hope everybody, everybody listening to us today, uh, regardless if you live in South Carolina or not, there are important elections all across this country. Go and have your voices heard. Absolutely. Okay, so what we're going to do is put in these captions are three things that I heard Mr. Harrison say. We're going to put your website where everybody can go get more information. We're going to put a link to donations. Give the money. Give all the money. Um, and then what was the third thing? We're going to tag everybody we know that lives in South Carolina to yes. remind them to watch this video and to get their bottoms to the polls, right? Amen to that. There okay. Is Awesome. And Mr. Harrison, let me ask you one more question before, and I'm going to, I want you to go, I want you to go do all the things that you need to do. If you win, when you win, will you go back to that man's house and pave his road? Well, this is the problem. It was so long ago. I can't remember what <laughs> county I was in, but this is my promise to the people of South Carolina. We're going to be paving a lot of roads here in South Carolina when I'm in the United States Senate. It's time that we invest in our infrastructure, that we make our schools better, that we make sure that we bring OBGYNs to all of the counties in South Carolina. So my pledge is to do the things that have not been done for 25 years by the center Graham and focus my energy and focus like a laser on the lives and improving the lives of the people in South Carolina. We believe you. There's only about 10 people in the country we believe anymore, Mr. Harrison, and you are one of them. <laughs> Thanks. And one of the reasons is because everyone that I know who actually knows you in real life tells me that you are just as sincere and kind and wise when the cameras are off as you are when the cameras are on. And I don't often hear that. So thank you. Thank, thank you for being you all the time. Thanks. We believe in you. Let's go get Mr. Harrison elected. And Let's do it, folks. Let's do it. Let's make history. Thank you so much for, for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Our honor. Our honor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Harrison, and thank, thank you. the entire team for us. Yes. Take care now, and everybody stay safe, please. Bye-bye.